going on guys welcome back to the channel my name is Hart for those of you that are new and today we have a six game NBA slate here on DraftKings for Thursday night early look slate breakdown where I go through who I like who I don't like early look player pool all the good stuff in this video game by game breakdown make sure to hit that like button and subscribe and let's talk through this slate so once again recording this super early uh, about three of the I think it was eight game slate so far tonight have started are going through so we'll see how i finish up i did two lineups in the four dollars to uh 100k to first contest so we'll see what happens there once again all i gotta say is darius garland sucks that is all i will say put him in one lineup and that dude is horrific uh if you guys saw my tweet it was literally i, I called it but moving on to this first game here sacramento versus washington obviously uh unbelievable matchup here for sacramento they're playing tonight so obviously a back-to-back -back could help washington keep it close Washington has been super, super uh, injury depleted. So on the Sacramento side, obviously it's a fantastic matchup here. Sabonis, Fox, Monk all look fantastic. I suggest getting to at least one of these guys, even two of these guys uh, could be really, really good for this matchup here. And I do think it's a even better bump for a guy like Keegan Murray here, who should be, uh, you know, seeing hopefully 10 plus, 10 plus shots, 30 plus minutes. And as you can see, he has solid upside if he does hit his shot. So I think all four of these main guys are really, really good. You know, obviously the main three are really, really strong. So I like going on to at least one, if not two of them in this matchup here against Washington as of right now. Obviously injury news can kind of change the whole slate. One of these guys could get injured tonight or, you know, they rest them. Who knows? But yeah, a lot of interest there. They have been starting Ellis. Uh, and as you can see, he's been playing solid minutes. So as a nice value at 4.1, he's definitely in play, especially if this game blows out. Uh, now he has been getting kind of lucky a little bit with, you know, some blocks. And some steals, even though that's kind of, kind of what he's known for, is to be out there for defense. Thus, why he doesn't really take many shots. Uh, so, obviously, he has a low floor if he's not doing too much there defensively, but a uh, solid value at 4.1. That's really it. I don't have much interest in any of these other guys, like a Duarte, um, like an Alex Len. They're just not playing a t uh, enough minutes for me personally to get to them. Moving on to Washington here. Uh, the big news right now is that Kuzma is back. So, Kuzma pool look fantastic here if you want to do a game stack. I mean, if this game stays close, they both should be doing pretty, pretty well to keep it close. Denny is also possibly back if he is. Kind of like the um, Sacramento side, all three of Kuzma, Poole, and Denny would all be strong, strong secondary options to play on the slates, especially if you're going to play multiple uh, Kings. It makes sense to at least probably have one uh, Washington Wizard. Ty Jones is still out. Bagley is still out. Kispert should probably still start. What we'll to wait and see? Um, what we'll to see what they do with the kind of point guard position? Nick, will they move Poole back to the bench? Will they start a guy like Jared Butler, who actually did solid that last game? Obviously, they're playing for nothing, playing against Houston, but he had a decent showing there, 36 fancy points. So we'll kind of have to wait and see what they do with that starting point guard spot. But obviously, the, the usage is going to go into go through Kuzma and most likely Kispert in that starting lineup. I uh, said so both of them look really, really solid. And if Poole does come off the bench, he'd be obviously the best one off the bench. But if they do start him, you know, Poole, Kuzma, and Kispert are going to lead this team offensively. And then we could possibly get to some value like a guy like Jared Butler if he does start. Moving on to the Pelicans here. Um, on the Pelican side, I, I think Zion's a safe option, 8.6. I mean, he's just been playing super, super well. Doesn't have like a massive ceiling, so it's not like you're really getting... A huge ceiling there at 8.6, but he's just been super solid coming at super low ownership. Uh, obviously, a very slow pace game here against Orlando, who is a good defensive team. So I, I don't think many people are going to get to this game. So if you're looking for some uh, very low owned guys, some secondary guys to get different on the slates, this is going to be your game. So obviously, Zion, a really, really strong, safe play. CJ and Brandon are more up and down, boomer bust. Um, it, it's just one of those things. They're there, secondary options. I just don't have a give or take. Maybe right now I do prefer CJ just because he's cheaper to Brandon, but all three of them are fine plays. Um, Trey Murphy, he's there. If you want to you know, take a shot, hopefully he hits a couple threes. He could pay off 5.9, but I don't think it's you know, a need to get to him. Jay Val is just obviously losing the minutes, not playing a ton of minutes right now. They've been going to Larry Nance, who's been playing a little bit better. Priced up to 4.5K though, so... A fine value when he's playing the you know, mid-20s minutes, which it's not a guarantee, but he's definitely there. And then if you're looking for some cheaper value, Najee Marshall is one of those guys who can be very productive in a short amount of time. He's there in the Jose Alvarado, kind of the same thing. So some options there. I kind of prefer right now the the cheaper options, you know, getting a little bit riskier for GPPs with Najee, with Jose. 
On the Orlando side here, obviously everything runs through Franz and Paolo. They both look really, really strong here in terms of just like contrarian options on the slates. Thugs is coming off probably one of his best, you know, fantasy point wise performances on the season with only nine shot attempts. Uh, he had obviously had three steals and two blocks, which helped out there. But yeah, 5.3, you can definitely take shots on these guards. Uh, I don't think there's a need to in terms of value. Jonathan Isaac's probably the best value there. I mean, they blew out Charlotte. It looks like it was kind of close there, but it, I think it was like 61 to 25, it, you know, halfway through the second quarter there. Uh, so Jonathan Isaac, they just didn't need to throw him back out there. Um, they kind of rested him the entire game. So usually you should see closer to 20 minutes. Uh, he's definitely a solid GPP dart throw play. Moving on to Brooklyn here versus Milwaukee. Brooklyn side, offense is going to go through Bridges and Thomas. So they both look really, really solid. I, I do have a good amount of interest in both. Uh, even though, you know, Mikel has been playing terrible recently, uh, as you can see there. Claxton is questionable. Uh, obviously, it's big news if he misses because they're going to need his size going up against Brooke Lopez, Bobby Portis, Giannis, if he's you know, good to go and back. If he's out, you know, they they kind of been weird about starting De'Aaron Sharp, but I would think they would really need him in the spot here against, you know, Milwaukee. I mean, I just don't see how they can go small against Milwaukee. So I think the Iron Sharp would probably be the kind of free square play of the day. And they could definitely get a little bit weird and go to guys like Bates, Diop, and Watford. We'll have to see with the starting lineup, possibly even Clowney. But uh, right now, kind of focused on the main two guys with offenses coming th- from, which is Cam Thomas, Mikhail Bridges, and then possibly getting to, you know, Schroeder here is a strong secondary option. And then possibly the Iron Sharp if he does start. On the Brooklyn, or excuse me, Milwaukee side, as I said, Giannis is out tonight. Um, so, you know, it could be just for the fact that it's a back-to-back. So, I would assume maybe he's back tomorrow. And then maybe they they rest a guy like Dame or they rest a guy like Middleton, uh, you know, who's coming back from injury. Played 25 minutes. We'll see how many minutes he plays tonight against Boston. But he's another probable candidate for resting tomorrow. So, we could get some value here for uh, Milwaukee. And, you know, pretty much just stacking Giannis and Bobby Portis and possibly a wing. But, yeah, right now... Um, you know, if Giannis is going to be out, Dame's going to be a really strong spin up. Bobby Middleton and Brooke Lopez are going to be really strong secondary options, even with Middleton on a minutes limit. And you could take a shot on a guy like Beasley, Beverly, or you know, Connaughton for some value. Don't think there's a necess- necessity to do that, uh, but they're there. Moving on to Chicago versus Houston here. Uh, good matchup here for Chicago. So if Kobe White is back, really, really like him. Another one of those guards who's been absolutely screwing me. Um, so I expect just so much pain, but DeRozan has been on fire pretty much the past, you know, two, three weeks here. Uh, so really, really like him in this matchup. Same thing with Booch. Definitely a little bit pricey, but I'm not really sure who's going to be able to guard him. So if they feed him down low, he does have that ability to go for 445 plus with the double-double upside. So all three bull starters look really, really good here. Obviously, if Kobe White's out, Io once again looks really, really good. I mean, he's just playing a ton of minutes. He's been productive. He's been scoring the ball a lot more recently without Kobe. So a lot to like here on the bull side, depending on the Kobe White injury. Now, Kobe's back. I don't think I'm going to get to Iowa at nearly 7K, even though he should still be playing kind of, you know, mid-30s minutes. I expect the shot attempts and the kind of the usage upside in terms of assists to go down, which it wouldn't make it worth it for me at 6.9 to get some there. Rather get to Kobe, rather pay up for DeMar or even Vooch. Uh, Crusoe, 6.1, definitely priced up. I mean, he's had some three solid games in a row besides that last one against Portland, but at 6.1, I'd rather, you know, take shots on other guys at that price tag. You know, guys who have more of upside with the, um, you know, ability to score offensively. And then Torrey Craig is definitely a value option. Minutes are kind of ticking up here. So definitely in play if you're looking for a cheaper value. Houston side here. I see the big game last game came from Jalen Green. Went for 67 and a half bomb there. Uh, 42 points career high, I believe, for Jalen Green here. So Obviously, offensively, it's going to go through Jalen Green. It's going to go through Van Fleet. So it makes sense to get to at least one of those two guys there. Uh, even in this matchup, you know, the Bulls, pretty, pretty bad. They usually give up uh, a good amount of points to the star players of the opposing team. So I expect a good game from at least, you know, Van Fleet or Green, if not both. Uh, so I do like them a good amount. I'll throw in Van Fleet for now. Jabari, Jabari Smith Jr., two back-to-back 40-bomb games there for him. It's fine. 7.1. Don't mind it. Once again, the minutes are just not the best on him, which I really wish he was getting, you know, high 30s minutes. He should be, but he's there. And then 
Uh, Eamon Thompson here played 32 minutes, uh, had a really, really good game there. 10 of 12, 5 of 7 from the free throw line. Obviously, he's not taking any threes. He knows he really can't hit them. So you need him to hit you know, those mid-ranges, kind of drive to the basket, get fouled. But as you can see, he has good upside. So at 6.3, he's probably the second best play besides, I'd say he's tied with, I'd say, you know, it's probably Jalen Green, Van Fleet, and then Eamon Thompson's right, right below them in terms of just, you know, really, really good and strong plays. Just because he's a guy who can do a little bit of everything. Jacket Landau has been coming off the bench. I expect them to use him a little bit more, especially if Vooch is getting the going. I expect them to look to Jock Landau here, who could sneak into, you know, 20 plus minutes. So he's definitely a, a viable GPP risky play there at 4.6 uh, for the slate. Dylan Brooks, if you're looking to get weird, definitely there. Um, same thing with Jeff Green, but I don't think there's a need to get to those guys. Moving on to Utah here. For the Utah side, um, we'll see if Laurie is out for this game. I know he's out for the game tonight, uh, so he could be back. And obviously, if, that, if he's back, it really kind of messes up the offense in terms of, you know, with him back, he, he takes over just so much of the offense, the usage, where it kind of lowers the, the ceiling guy for, for guys there like Sexton, like Keontae George. Now, if Lori's out once again, expect Sexton and Conte George to lead this team offensively. Um, you know, John Collins would be a really, really strong secondary option. And you could get to some value here depending on who they start alongside them. But yeah, it really depends on if Lori's in or out. If he's out, really, really like into one uh, of Sexton and George and possibly Collins, if not two of them. But obviously, if Lori's back, then I'd maybe get to one of these guys. I'd prefer Keontae because they've been having Sexton come off the bench when Lori has been back. So just to keep an eye out there. Moving on to Dallas here. Lucas priced up all the way up to 12.7. Kyrie at 9.4. They're there. They're fine plays. And same thing with Gafford. You know, he's been productive, especially when Luke has a good game. Gafford has usually been having a good game. So I wouldn't mind stacking them, you know, Gafford and Luca, if you want to. Um, right now, not a ton of value on the board. So I'm assuming people will still play Luca just because he's coming off a game where he shot, I think it was what, Six to twenty-seven, still went for sixty, triple double. I, I mean, the man is just still too cheap there at twelve point seven, even with no value. Uh, so, really like both of those guys. Kyrie's a solid secondary option, and then moving on to the last game here of the Knicks versus Denver on the Knicks side. Uh, Brunson obviously has been absolutely uh, a beast here. Uh, you know, almost three straight games of forty fancy or forty points there. Obviously, three straight games of fifty or more fancy points. Not the best matchup here going against Denver. Um, but still, New York has been keeping it close. They've been really good defensively. So Brunson looks like a fantastic spin up option at nine point one. Um, Josh Hart, just one of those guys. He's he's back to playing pretty much the whole game. So really hard not to like him at seven point three, even though he's not the best offensively. Divincenzo, I think he's definitely a very sneaky play here uh, for GPPs. Even with Brunson back, Divincenzo should see kind of mid teens, possibly even more shot attempts. I mean. When we saw before Brunson got you know hurt for a few games, and it was just Steven Chenzo and uh, Josh Hart kind of leading the team, he was kind of seeing that range of like 15 to 20 shot attempts alongside Brunson. So I expect that volume to come back, especially with OG out. Uh, so I do have a good amount of interest in all three of these guys, Steven Chenzo, Hart, and Brunson. And do expect a good minutes here for guys like Hartenstein and Precious to guard Jokic. So uh, you know Hartenstein's minutes have ticked back up. Expect them to stay about the same. So... He's another one of those guys, um, kind of like a Jack Landau, where the minutes aren't a guarantee, but they definitely have upside because they're going to need the size against the opposing center. Uh, you know, obviously Vooch for the Rockets, and then obviously, you know, Jokic here for Denver. So keep that in mind there. Um, Bog Donovan has seen decent minutes off the bench, but it's still at 3.7. He's just not been the best. I mean, everything's just running through the three main guys of Brunson, Hart, DiVincenzo. So... Not really uh, need to get to any value on the New York Knicks side. And then obviously, I think Jokic is a fantastic uh, pivot play off of Luka. Uh, Murray is still too cheap there at 8.4. And then obviously, Aaron Gordon and MPJ and KCP, all three of them make for really strong secondary options if you want to get to uh, you know, a piece or two from this team if you're not getting to one of the main two guys. So uh, that's kind of the breakdown for you guys today. Obviously, do have a, a little bit of injury news to wait for. Uh, honestly, the Giannis situation changes kind of the entire site and how we want to load up on Milwaukee versus Brooklyn. Um, same thing with Lori Markin and, so, and same thing with Kobe White. So kind of all three of those guys do really change the entire slate. So kind of to wait for that. Do apologize. But yeah, really, really like getting to at least one guy on the Kings and Washington side. Um, 
and then loading up on Milwaukee side and then probably getting different with that New York Nick and Denver game is kind of how I'm looking at it right now. But obviously injury news will change the entire slate. Hit that like button and subscribe and let's get into it tomorrow.